Well, I am engaged in a number of different things. I wear a lot of different hats. Um, and they, my professional life all feeds back. My work at the lab or at a crime scene or at an autopsy inspires my work as a writer. And being a writer makes me an even more observant uh, participant in the lab. I notice things that aren't important forensically, but might be important as a writer, little details. So they really do feed back on each other. And I use my experiences, I use elements of cases to make up my Temperance Brennan and my Tori Brennan stories. So it just takes organization and discipline and any day I have a free day when I'm not touring or traveling and I'm not at the lab, I write all day. I think of TV Tempe and Book Tempe. And Book Tempe is, I'm not real specific, but we know she's certainly older than 40. She was older than 40 in the first book, and that was 15 years ago. So she's older than 40. She commutes between the Carolinas and Quebec. She's been married and unmarried. She works with Andrew Ryan. Then there's TV Tempe, and she's in her 30s. She's younger. Um, she works with an FBI agent named Celie Booth. She's in Washington, D.C. So I think of TV Tempe as a prequel. It's like mm -hmm. Tempe the early years. Mm -hmm. And when I start to write a new Temperance Brennan book, I like that because book Tempe doesn't have to be impacted by TV Tempe. The idea for the young adult series actually came from my son, Brendan, who writes the books with me. And he noticed, as did I, that a lot of young people are reading my adult books and a lot of young people are watching the TV show Bones. So we thought it would be appealing to young adults to have the type of book that I write for Temperance Brennan, but a story in which the main characters are younger. Mm -hmm. So we decided to create Tori Brennan, who is Temperance Brennan's 14-year-old great niece, and she and her friends, um, who are 14, 15, 16 years old, um, have some unique abilities, which we learn about in the first book called Virals, and they use those abilities along with science. They love science to solve cold cases and to solve mysteries. As a forensic anthropologist, I'm one member of a team. I don't work alone. I work with a forensic chemist or a forensic dentist or a forensic pathologist. And often when journalists come to my lab, they're a little disappointed, I think, in that anthropology doesn't have a lot of razzle-dazzle technological mm -hmm. developments. We still use a microscope. We still, you know, cut samples from bones. A lot of developments have taken place in other areas, such as DNA, that impact what I do. For example, any case that comes in without an identification, I'll take a sample and send it over to the DNA section. Or I might have to have very, very small things that I look at microscopically, so I'll go over to the microscopic center and have thin sections made of the bones. So you, absolutely there have been technological developments in many, many fields. But in the end, it's the human eye, and it's the human intuitive process and in being able to put all of those clues together to solve the puzzle. And that's true in writing a thriller, as well as in solving a real case in life.